All right, we're beginning. Um, so welcome. Um, my name is Rebecca Tuffy, and um, professionally, I teach the Alexander Technique. Um, before I became an Alexander Technique teacher, I was a performer, just like you guys. Um, in fact, I was a singer for many years, and um, I began acting when I was in high school, and then I went to college, actually, for, for theater, for acting. And um, that was where I encountered the Alexander Technique. Um, so I was 19 years old when I started doing this work. And um, I basically got into it because I had been given the note many times, um, not so much as a singer, but as an actress, that you know my characters had different physical lives than I had. And <laughs> that I would be more interesting to watch if I had a little more, um, you know, physical changeability. And so <clears throat> my sophomore year in college, I called it my year of the body. And I studied modern dance, but I also started studying the Alexander Technique. And um, I have to tell you that it blew my mind pretty quickly. Um, when my teacher put her hands on me for the first time, I had never experienced that sensation of lightness and freedom inside of myself. And um, as, as the year of study, because it was a year-long class in my college, as the year of study um, progressed, I not only got to know that experience of lightness and freedom, but I also learned how to um, sing and how to speak with that same sense of, of lightness in myself. Um, over the years, because it's now been about 16 years that I've been um, a student and, and now a teacher of this work, um, I've actually found the Alexander Technique to be really helpful um, with almost everything that I do in my life. Um, my physical life, you know, like if I have to go and, and, and pick up heavy things, um, or um, my kind of relationship life, you know, the way that I am with my loved ones. And um, certainly with, with rehabilitating injury um, and pain. So um, before I kind of ask you guys a little bit about yourself, there was one other thing that I thought was worth sharing, um, which I, I don't usually tell as part of my story as an Alexander teacher, but um, I was remembering that when I was in high school, I, um, I was part of that state, um, state choral festival circuit. Does anybody, has anybody been a part of something like that? Yeah, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so we, we would have these, um, you know, within our school, we would, we would learn a body of music and then go off and audition to be a part of these weekend-long festivals where regionally kids would get together and a, you know, a, a college level or a professional um, um, conductor would come in and conduct the weekend festival of, of choral music. And um, I was really involved in, in, in this circuit and it meant that I did a lot of singing. I mean, I spent sometimes three hours a day um, singing and then I would be in like a two hour long play rehearsal. So I was really vocally working my chords. And um, at the end of my senior year, I actually was losing notes in my range where my, my voice would just disappear on certain, you know, at certain breaks in my voice. And um, I actually didn't know enough to do anything about it. And um, I, I didn't have teachers who knew enough to, to, to tell me to do something about it until I went to college and I auditioned for my voice department in college. And the members of the faculty heard these notes missing in my range and they said, you need to go and see a doctor. And it turned out that I had swellings on my cords. I didn't have notes, for anybody who kind of knows what that is, um, but I did have swellings. And um, I was thinking about that because that feels like ancient history to me. I mean, as an Alexander teacher now, I speak eight to 10 hours a day. I mean, I just use my voice all the time and I never suffer any kind of vocal, um, any vocal trauma or um, irritation. And I really credit it to this work. And um, I was a part of a cabaret last year. I, ha I don't usually sing professionally anymore, but I was in this cabaret, and um, one of my professors from college came to hear me sing. 
And she gave me a really nice compliment. She said, oh, your voice is so much purer than it used to be. But I haven't done any legitimate vo vocal training, you know, in the, mm -hmm. past, in the past 12 years. All I've done is Alexander Technique. So it was a really sweet compliment, but I, I thought you guys as musicians might appreciate that, that um, I'm gonna get in, in a minute to what Alexander is, that, um, that this work is, is really kind of powerful and transformative in and of itself. So um, before I go on to what Alexander Technique is, just a show of hands, how many of you, I've been talking about singing, how many of you are singers? Great, okay. How many of you are instrumentalists? All right, okay, so since there are just a handful of you guys, what do you play? Drum set. Drum set, great. What do you play? Piano. Piano, terrific. Mm -hmm. And you play what? Drums. Drums as well, okay, great. Wow. Um, so Alexander Technique is a process for um, examining and improving how you use yourself. Um, you guys are all, because you're in the college music department, you are studying other processes, right, that help you to, to play your instrument better, whether it's the drum set, the piano, or your voice. Um, with Alexander Technique, we look at ourselves as our first instrument. So with Alexander Technique, you learn how to <laughs> play yourself with the same um, degree of finesse that you learn how to play your vocal mechanism or you learn how to play you know, your drum set or your piano. Um, Alexander does not replace, I mean, my story is, you know, I wasn't studying any vocal technique, but my voice actually um, became clearer. Um, but Alexander actually doesn't replace your musical technique and your study with your professors. It just complements it so that when you show up to a lesson, um, you're actually more able to, um, to do what's being asked of you. Um, so maybe you're wondering, well, why? Why would, why would learning how to play myself um, have me be a better singer or have me be a better um, instrumentalist? We all have unconscious habits. We all have these little um, holdings and stiffenings in ourselves that um, maybe sometimes we become aware of because they start to cause us tension or you know, we see a photograph and we see that we're standing a funny way or we're playing a funny way in the photograph. But for the most part, these tensions and stiffenings are unconscious because they're just who we are. Um, so with Alexander Technique, you learn how to actually become aware of these unconscious holding patterns and then you learn how to change them. You learn how to do them differently. Um, so, let me just look at my notes and see where we go from here. All right. Um, this technique is the work of somebody called uh, Frederick Matthias Alexander. He was an actor and he lived in Australia back in the 1880s and 90s. He was a young actor in his mid-20s. And he was suffering uh, vocal problems. He was actually losing his voice. So this brings me back to, we have these unconscious patterns that we don't know about, right? Um, so, turns out that he had some unconscious tightening patterns that were creating this hoarseness when he went to speak. Um, but he didn't know this at first. At first, all he knew was that he was losing his voice. So how many of you have ever, after hours of practicing or after performing, um, felt any kind of pain or, or, or tension? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, almost everybody. Um, and frequently, we just think, oh, you know, like, I work too hard, or I'm tired, or I'm having a bad day. Um, but it was recurrent enough for F.M. Alexander, for Frederick Matthias Alexander, that he was actually not able to perform anymore. Um, so his, his pain, or his hoarseness in his case, reached the level where it was actually keeping him from doing the thing that he loved. 
Um, so he went to doctors and he said, how can you help me? Um, tell me what's wrong. And they looked at him, they examined him, and they said, well, there actually isn't anything wrong. You just have inflamed vocal cords. And they prescribed rest. Um, same thing we do now, actually, tea, honey, you know, don't talk. Mm -hmm. And, um, My. right, <laughs> and he, um, he actually rested up and regained his voice. And then he went into his next big performance and he lost his voice halfway through. And so that kind of set off a light bulb to him where he actually said, wow, if there's nothing wrong with my vocal mechanism, but I'm losing my voice while I'm performing, maybe there's something about how I'm performing that isn't working for me. So I, I like to kind of highlight this part of Alexander's story because we kind of hear right off the bat that he wasn't waiting around for somebody else to tell him what was wrong with him. He was thinking kind of like a scientist in a way. He was thinking, hmm, you know, when here's where I start out and then I do this activity and here's the result. So what happens then? What am I doing in that activity that, that causes the result of the hoarseness? So he actually went off and um, he set up mirrors around himself. He put um, you know, three mirrors so that he would really be able to see um, what he was doing while he was speaking. And I have to tell you, he was very surprised by what he found. So that kind of brings me back to the idea that we all have things that we're doing that we don't know about. We have things that we're doing that are actually unconscious. Um, you know, when I stand here and speak, the way I'm using myself feels normal to me because it's normal, because it's how I, how I speak. Um, so we have to, when we're using Alexander Technique, we have to go outside of just that normal brain space and we have to start, you know, almost as if we've got three mirrors set up around us, begin, um, you know, uh, bringing on a certain level of self-awareness or self-observation. So Alexander um, watched himself speaking and he noticed that he was doing a couple of very bizarre things. One of the things he was doing was he was tightening down. You guys hear the change in my voice right away when I yeah. He was tightening down his chin in toward his toward his his chest. He was also, did you hear that when I went when my chin was in this position? Did you hear suddenly you could hear the gasping in for the breath, right? He began to notice that when his chin was down like this, there was a big audible gasping of air. And then he noticed that on top of all of this, he was also, when he went to speak, throwing his head back like that. So maybe, maybe you see it changing in me as I'm speaking, that there's a whole set of tensions that get brought on by those patterns. As he watched himself further, he began to notice that he was also um, arching his back when he went to speak. And I don't know if you saw my legs kind of lock up as I, as I arch my back, my legs get locked up. Um, so the next kind of place in his process was, okay, now I've noticed all of these things about myself. Now let me try to change some of them. And he, um, you know, he began just trying to kind of change them, right? Instead of arching the back to put the back back, instead of compressing down like this to put his head up like that. Um, and we're going to get to this in just a minute more experientially, but he recognized that he couldn't just make a fast change in himself. He couldn't actually just move his head. He actually had to go a little more internal than that so that he could really make a change. And what that meant was that he couldn't just do it physically. He had to actually use his mind and use his, his thinking um, to, to make a change in his whole, in his whole coordination. So um, who, who wants to be the first volunteer here? <laughs> yeah, okay, Kathleen, right? All right, come on over. Good. <laughs> so um, I, I wanna save the, the singing and, and speaking and instrument playing work for, for a little bit um, later. Um, so we're going to start, I'm pulling your hair back because I'm about to put my hand up here on your neck. Um, <laughs> I want to start with something that's a little bit more pedestrian. So I'm going to pull one of these chairs over and we're going to work with <coughs> bringing some observation to this activity that you probably do a lot. 
So you're gonna, yeah, go ahead and sit down. Great. All right. Hello, welcome. So um, let's just see. I know this is a little unusual because you've got a big group of people now watching you. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna put my hand here, um, mainly just as like a friendly, you know, like a friendly everything's okay kind of hand, right? <coughs> Um, and let's stand up and, okay, good, and let's sit back down again, okay. So that's just kind of like for free, right? Okay. Just to be comfortable standing and sitting in front of the group. So the next time you're going to stand up, I want you to just see if you notice anything like what I described to Mr. Alexander noticing. If you notice any unnecessary tensions or any unnecessary stiffenings in your body, as you stand up. Um, I'm not sure, maybe my legs are mm -hmm. Yeah, your legs feel a little bit like they might be pushing or working hard. I think so. Okay, good. Go ahead and sit down. Same question. Um, I guess the front of my legs. Yeah, the front of your legs. Okay, good. So, um, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's zoom in a little bit more onto um, onto your neck and your head. So that's where my hand has been, right? Mm -hmm. Now I bet that if I take my hand away, you probably don't have much awareness, right, of your neck. Yeah, not so much at all. So I'm putting my hand here because that actually gives you, it's like a mirror almost, where my hand is gonna just call the attention of your nervous system to this part of your body. All right, now go ahead and stand up and I want you to notice if there's any movement between your neck and your head. Did you notice anything? Not that, I don't think so. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and sit down. I guess there's a little bit of movement right here. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, so, um, what Alexander discovered when he worked with himself was that there was a joint up here between his head and the rest of his body that he wasn't using. There's a joint uh, between the base of the skull and the top of the spine. There you go. And um, when he thought of rebalancing his head up there on that joint, it actually m completely changed his movement. So let's, let's see what happens if we just kind of bring your awareness into this joint. Okay, so let me give you a little more chance to, to gain awareness of that. The top of your spine is up here in between your ears. So you can just see that in your mind's eye. You know, like we've all got this inner eye where we can pay attention to ourselves. You just see a spine projecting itself through your body, all the way up in between your shoulders, through your neck, and then up here in between your ears. And then your head moves, there you go, very simply, on the top of that spine. You know, what's that like? Light. Light. Uh, you guys see her changing? Can you see her quality changing? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and stand. Oh, oh my word. <laughs> and she floats up out of the chair. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so you've got something new to pay attention to, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's see if that changes how you're able to pay attention to your activity, right? Like, let's see if you notice something different as you sit down. Good, go ahead. It felt like, not that it's a skull and a body, but like one thing. Oh, it felt like like all of you was sitting down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, now do more of your habit, because I want to see if you can actually recognize what you were doing between your neck and your head before. Because those of us who are watching probably saw that even though you didn't, you couldn't tell that you were moving your neck and your head, you were actually in your habit. So let, let's see if, if you can get some awareness of that. Go ahead, Kathleen, stand up. Ah, yeah. You are! Isn't that brilliant? So three minutes ago, she had no awareness of being able to do that, you know, that she was, of what she was doing. It felt normal to you. You actually said, I don't think I'm moving my neck and my head. And now you just repeat it, the exact same movement you did a few minutes ago, and now you're really aware that absolutely you're, um, I would call this, you're letting your neck kind of pull forward 
and then your head is falling back behind you as you stand up. Let's do it again. Great. Thanks for being the first guinea pig. Okay. Okay, hang on. So bring your awareness all the way back up into here because this joint between your head and your neck is um, not just the, the, the way that we're going to um, gain more self-awareness, but it's also the way that you're going to make real changes in your coordination. And that's why you're beginning to feel like you're moving in one piece instead of being a bunch of parts that are just moving. OK, so let your neck free. That's right. And then go ahead and sit down. Imagine that you're just tipping your nose a little bit. There we go. That's it. And go ahead and sit down. Very good. Yeah, what's that like? Yeah, you didn't feel all the weight. Okay, let's go ahead and stand up. Okay, so pause. So I have to say pause to Kathleen, because like all of us, her habits are strong. There's a certain kind of forcefulness in how we do the things that we do. Um, so if you don't interrupt yourself, then you actually won't be able to do it differently. Um, so I'm, I'm pausing you, right? I'm saying, slow down. Don't rush it into standing. Slow down. Have a different thought here. And there you go. Beautiful. All right, shall we try this in walking? All right, why not? OK, go for a little walk. Let's see where you start off. <laughs> yeah, there's not too much space. That's OK. OK. What do you notice as you're walking? if you ever think about how you stand and sit. Oh, wow. OK, good. Good. Yeah, you guys are performers, right? Performers think about a lot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, raise your hand if you ever think about how you walk. OK, all right. Good. I mean, I, I think actually that you guys are then ahead of the game, because a lot of the times, um, you know, people don't really think about how they move. So it's. It's a new thing just to become aware of your body in motion. All right, so um, so you're noticing something about your foot, about putting your heel down first. OK. Um, let's come all the way back up in here again. Good, all right. Now, go internal and, yeah, there you go, and think so that the change comes from the inside out. OK, and open up your eyes, uh -huh, because when you know, when you perform, you need to be having some kind of relationship with your audience. And the audience doesn't like it when you close your eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and if you're walking around campus, you can't walk around with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Your eyes have to be open. <laughs> All right. So you can actually think into that spine. There you go, with your eyes open. Yep, yep. Yeah, good. All righty. All right, let's go for a walk. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's great. That's what a child would do. That's very natural. She just went right up under her toes. She had so much lightness in herself. She just went right under her toes. That's brilliant. OK. All right. Come on. There you go. Oh, wow. OK. Now, I saw when I, was, when I arrived here today that Professor Dahlke made these really great flyers for this presentation. And the couple sentences in the flyers are about performance anxiety, right? Like being nervous when you perform? Yeah. If you walked into a performance like that, do you think you'd be nervous? Not so much. Not so much. Yeah, I don't think so. No, not so much. Yeah, yeah. not so much. Go, do your normal walk. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you have to find it, right? <laughs> yeah, find it. Oh, let me ask you, it, I mean, all, it, you know, you're being such a good sport, mm -hmm. but is there a slightly more, like, self-conscious um, kind of attitude in your normal walk? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it just feel a little bit more like, yeah, or a little bit more maybe worried about what might come next? All right, let's go back into this other walk. All right, now hang on. Uh, let your neck be free, and again, you're going to think way up all the way through this long spine. Your spine comes this high up in your body. It goes up there in between your ears. Beautiful. 
And then you've got that head that's just elegantly poising and balancing. There you go. All right, let's go for a walk. Yeah. Yeah, what's that? Are you like the queen right now? <laughs> Well, you you are coming up onto your toes a little bit, so so just let yourself yeah let yourself just walk through the space. I'm putting my toes in. All right, yes. Before I was doing that, I'm doing this. Um, well, you don't have to go down toe first. You could you could go down heel first. I think what you're feeling is there's so much more lightness in this walk than in your normal walk. One more time, we'll initiate it together. Okay, now hang on, hang on, hang on. So you can't just, this is the part of Alexander's story where you can't just try to make the change in your body. You actually have to take a moment and kind of think through the change. There you go, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, you could go heel, go ahead, go heel. Heel, heel ball, that's it, heel ball toe, heel ball toe. Heel ball toe, that's it, heel ball toe, yes, heel ball toe, yes. Yeah, yeah, now you're going heel ball toe. Yeah, all right, thanks Kathleen. Okay, so guys, what did you see? What, what, what seemed to change with Kathleen as we worked? What, what interested you about, about watching those contrasts? Consciousness. Consciousness, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like the weight, like before she's, she's like, you know, like the body is like just a bit like falling down. Uh -huh. and she's like holding herself up, but it doesn't look like she's doing an effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Effortless. Effortless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it appeal, as audience members, is it appealing to watch somebody moving that way with that, with that kind of consciousness and effortlessness and just easy, you know, easy poise? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so let's all find this in ourselves. Um, here's a little model skeleton. He's cute, right? Um, What's his name? <laughs> I never name my skeletons. I have friends who do, but <laughs> we could call him Jack. He'll be Jack for today. <laughs> Um, so here's the reason why we have to start up in here with this, with this top joint. So your head weighs between 10 and 15 pounds. Your head is sizable and it's heavy. Um, if your neck is reaching forward, like remember when, when we saw Kathleen's habit and she kind of let her neck pull forward and her head fell back? If your head is going forward, or excuse me, if your neck is going forward like that, then the 15 pounds of your head is falling down into your body. It creates a compression. It creates, I like to call it a downward, a downward push, or sometimes I call it a downward pull. It, but it creates a down, a downward compression into the rest of your body. Now, what's inside the body? Stuff. Organs, stuff, important stuff, right? Do you think all that important stuff in there likes all of this downward pressure? No. <laughs> no. So if you're a pianist, which we've only got one of right now, but if you're a pianist and you're sitting at your piano, maybe with your neck forward and your head back like that, and all of this, or you're sitting at your drums, because I know you guys do it too, right? <laughs> or if you're sitting at your drums like this, do you think you can breathe? Well, I'm sorry. Obviously, you're breathing because you're alive, right? Thank you. <laughs> but, but do you think your breathing is effortless or efficient? No. Not really. Your breathing is going to be compromised because your lungs are being compromised because there's all of this downward pressure. 
So the way, the way to make these changes happen is a kind of head leading, to let the head lead the change. So if this is like a snapshot of where, of where we are in a moment of going to sing or going to play or going to stand up, then what we need to do is we need to think, first of all, of letting go. So you've got to let go of whatever you're holding on to. It could just be physically. You could just say, OK, let me, let me let go. Let me let go of that squeeze in my shoulders. Or let me let go of that little um, tightening of my neck. Or let me let go of that setting of my jaw. Let me let go of something so that my body can follow my head. My head is going to spring this way. My head's going to spring. We call it forward and up. My head's going to spring forward and up. And the rest of my body is going to decompress as it follows the release of my head. All right, who wants to, who wants to work next? All right, who wants to work next? <laughs> All right. She's nervous, but she's taken a chance. Okay. Um, yes. Are my hands a little cold? No. No? They're comfortable? Yeah. Good. All right. So, um, do a little less tightening, right? So you tell me, where in your body do you feel like there's, there's a little bit of tension that you might... In my neck? Nice. In your neck. Great. Okay. So let my hands kind of help. Yeah, there you go. So that you, um, you just give up that little bit of tension. And then you're going to imagine your skeleton inside of you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're going to imagine that your head, just what I showed the skeleton, that your head kind of, wee, your head comes just a little bit forward and up. OK. So don't try to put it. Just let it, there you go, just let it spring. And then you're going to imagine that your spine, right, your spine, which makes up the middle of your body, your spine follows your head. Your spine literally, there you go, your spine just kind of grows longer and longer and releases and flows. That's lovely. All right, let's go for a little walk together. OK, come back. Good. How you doing? You OK to be in front of the group? Yeah. All right, turn this way. <laughs> okay, so what I saw, Dorothy did a really good job thinking along with me. But then it was when she started her activity. So we're, we're starting right now with sitting and standing and walking because it's just a little more neutral, right? We don't have as many feelings about walking as we do about making our music. We're getting to that. We're going to do some singing and some playing in a few minutes. Um, so what I saw is that Dorothy was doing such a good job Letting, letting some of that tension soften in her neck, letting her head go, just what I was describing, letting her head kind of let up, letting her spine decompress. And then when you went to take your walk, you drew yourself down into your walk. Uh -huh. So that's a really important moment. It's the moment when we start. It's the moment when you, you, know, you put your hands in preparation at the piano, or it's the moment when you receive that in-breath that you're going to sing on. So in those moments, Alexander called it a critical moment. Mm. It's a moment when you want to really just stay with yourself. And instead of going down into your movement, you think about letting up into your movement. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, good. All right. So. Go ahead, give up just a little bit of tension. So I love, I love being able to leave behind the nervous anxiety of my mind and just go into my body. You know, it, it just seems like, there, that's beautiful, Dorothy. Yeah, it just seems like all of that stuff that we worry about, like, is the audience going to like me? Am I going to be able to do the hard passage? Like, that's just mental chatter. But, but I, can, I can really leave that behind by going, OK, let me free my neck. And, and let me invite my head to release 
so that it doesn't push down into my body. That's it, but it lets up. And I just let my head lead me into a little walk. That's it. So you go, that's it. Hey, that was better. Good for you. Yeah, that was a much lighter beginning. Uh huh. What do you notice? Dorothy. I'm doing better than before. Yeah, you're doing, you're lighter than before, aren't you? Yeah. Here, turn one more time this way, because we don't have, we've only got this little passage, so. Okay, and your neck is free. There you go, and your head's letting up. And I'm going to put my hands right here, because this is the bottom part of your spine, all the way down in here. So we want to keep inviting your spine to let up, instead of going down over there, right? It's like when you're playing a passage of music, you don't want to let your mind get ahead of you. You don't want to go to the hard part. You want to stay with where you're at. So it's the same way right now. I want you to stay where I you are. I had a question. Yeah, good. When can you go to the bathroom? When can you go to the bathroom? As soon as you and I finish working, okay? Uh -huh. All right. So your head's letting up, your spine's going up, and you're going to go for the wall. Yes. Just like that. You guys see that? Good, good. Now, don't think about any of this, okay? And just show us your walk again. Good, okay, come on back. And, and now let's think about it, okay? Yeah, let's, let's use some Alexander technique. So, you give up, you give up a little tension, right? Yeah you, yeah. Give, yeah, you give away a little tension, and you imagine that your head is poising way up there on the top of your mm -hmm. spine. And you imagine that your spine is letting up, it's decompressing, even all the way down here, and you go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show off? <laughs> you weren't nervous at all. Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> okay, would you like to come? Yes. All right. Where's the bathroom? Are we allowed to go in the bathroom? You are allowed to go to the bathroom. I went and used the one on the second floor. Does anybody know where the women's room is? Uh, on the other side. Okay. Uh, all right, Kathleen's going to show you. All right, what's your name? Albert. Albert. Nice to meet you, Albert. You so, are you willing to make a little bit of sound? Yes, yes. yes he is. <laughs> do, you, do you sing? Yes. yes. What kind of singing do you do? In the chorus, great. And are you a tenor or a baritone? Tenor. You're a tenor, great. Okay. All right. I'm not going to ask you to sing a whole song. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Closer. <laughs> He's running away. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We're not going to. We're not going to sing a song. We're just going to make some sounds. So, and if you're uncomfortable, then we won't do it. Yeah. But I, I think I think you're game. Okay, so um, you can you can face the group, and you could actually, if you don't want to look at the group, you see there's a white box back there on the wall. You can always look at that box. Okay, okay good. So is this how you would be standing if you were singing in your chorus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, um, what do you know? What do you recognize about how you use your body to stand? You know, when you're when you're singing in chords, what do you think about? Mm. Nothing. Okay. The music. You think about the music. Oh, guys. Okay. So that's why I said, with Alexander technique, we think about ourselves as the first instrument that we play, right? Because that was such an honest answer, Albert. That when you're in chorus, you think about the music, but. You're what makes the music, right? Yeah, the music's got to come through you. So if you want to sing the music well, then it's like you have to kind of play play yourself well. Yeah. So um, so when we're standing, it's like a balancing act. Okay. It's a balance of the head, right? I've got this kind of round skull up in here. A balance of my head on my torso. You know what a torso is? What? Yeah. Oh, oh. You guys see this? I'm making torso. Albert made 
Torso. Love me. <laughs> okay, let's see what everybody else does. So close your eyes so you don't feel self-conscious about your neighbors. And either with a circle, draw your own version of your torso. Or you could just do it with, with lines. You, know, you could put like your top hand where you think the top of your torso is and your bottom hand where you think the bottom of your torso is. Oh, good. Are you guys willing to show each other nah. your thoughts? Okay, so if you're willing to share, you know, what what you just drew as your torso, stand up and put your hands in that position. <laughs> Good. And 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 look. Oh, <laughs> they're changing a little bit. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Do you think your torso is smaller when you're sitting? <laughs> okay, all right, that's a fair answer. Yeah, that's a fair answer. So just look around and see that there's actually, there is some, there's, there's a little bit of difference in what people are doing. Some people are slightly higher, although it looks like most of you guys have a pretty good sense that your torso, and you can sit down, your torso goes from the bottom of your pelvis. What is the torso? Torso is this middle part of your body where all of your vital organs are. Okay. So your torso goes from your pelvic floor, so way down here. So a lot of you guys were right about there, right? More like your pubic bone. So it goes from your pelvic floor way up to the roof of your mouth. Yee. <laughs> and, and again, you guys were pretty good because you were, you were this far down and many of you were up here around your chin or your jaw. But I'm gonna put him in profile and just show you that the spine goes up higher than the jaw does, or, or than the chin, to be precise. Your spine actually comes up to the level of your ears. And if you run your tongue along the roof of your mouth, you're touching the base of your skull. The roof of your mouth is the bottom of your skull, mm -hmm. <laughs> which means that, if, you know, you can't put your tongue all the way into the back, but if you could run your tongue all the way back there, behind the throat, you know, behind mm -hmm. that, that back wall of the throat, that's where the base of your skull rests on your spine. So it's really long, right, the torso. Um, from way up in here to all the way down here. And since I'm holding the skeleton, let me just also say, the balancing act of your head upon your torso takes place here at this place that, that, that we worked on with Kathleen and Dorothy. The balancing act of your torso takes place down here on your hip joints. So notice that your hip joints are these sockets here in the pelvis. These guys, everybody if you need to stand up, stand up and feel this. These are not your hip joints. These are hip crests. On the skeleton, it's these bits, these points here at the front of the pelvic bone. The hip joint is down in here, where if I march, there's a crease there. And that's where, that's where your torso balances on your legs. So, I'm gonna put my hand way down there. I'm gonna actually put both of my hands down there and say your torso is balancing on your legs. Yeah, your torso is balancing on your legs. So let your neck, uh, let your neck free. So you, you, you find a little bit of stiffening in your neck and you think, okay, I'll let that go. And then you imagine that your head is floating all the way up there 
in between your ears. Don't go on your toes. You don't need to go into your toes. That was fun when she did it. It was so natural when she did it. It's what children do. It really is. They just, they're so light in themselves. They just go wee, 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 right up and down. But you don't need to do that. And then you're going to imagine right in through here. You feel where I am in your back, Albert? Yeah. That your spine is releasing this way, right? It's decompressing. It's just going all the way up like that. There you go. So that your torso balances on your legs. OK, are you standing the same right now or different? I think it's slightly different. It is slightly different, yeah. What do you notice is different? Because at the beginning, just I stand here and you think about anything. Yeah, yeah, and now you're really thinking, aren't you? Yeah, okay. Now go back to where you'd normally sing in chorus. Go back to your normal kind of standing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good, okay. So you're just gonna, um, you know, sing a note. Good, can you hold the sound? Sustain it? Okay, good. Good, okay. It's, yeah, that's okay. It's enough. It's enough to just hold one note. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Now let's let's see what happens if we think a little bit more of. I've got my hand right behind this part of Albert's chest. I've got my hand on right behind here. So this part of your spine, you're just going to think of it decompressing or flowing upwards, right? So that your head is leading this whole decompression of your body so that your spine keeps letting up this way. Now don't go on your toes, okay? Because you've got mm. hip joints, which means that when your spine changes its, its length right now, your body is actually movable. That's right. Don't go on your toes. Your body is movable right in there in those hip joints. Good, now relax your shoulders and sing your note again. Good, okay. Is that a different experience? Yes. yes. how is that different? The note is a little bit lighter or something? Your body is lighter or the note is lighter? No. The note is lighter. Hey guys. Would you be willing to, to try to describe the change in the sound of Albert's note? Yeah, Kathleen? I can hear it better. Or it sort of sounded a bit choked off. Mm -hmm. I don't make out what the person Yeah. Anybody else? It kind of got brighter. It got brighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love describing the changes in sound because it's very subjective. Because we're all going to hear something slightly different. Um, and I, I just think that that's fun to notice for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, what your attention is drawn to. OK, do you want to sing? Do you do a warm up in chorus? Do you do like an arpeggio or something? Mm -hmm. OK, good. Keep doing, keep doing your warm up. That's it. And while you're doing the warm up, see if you can think into your body. Good. And now just sustain your note. different about it? No. Okay, good. Thank you for being our first person to sing.
Okay, who has a song? Yeah? Okay, all right, come. All right, let me do a little time check and see how we're doing. Okay, good. All right, what would you like to say? Um, a small jazz song. Okay, terrific, mm -hmm. sounds good. Can we hear you sing first? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. All right, so you just sing, you know, maybe do the first verse, do just the beginning of it, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna move over here. Mm -hmm. I just start? <laughs> just start. Wrap your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Great. Okay. Um, sounds great. Great starting place, right? So we're just going to play and see what else we can make of it. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in terms of what we've been talking about today, um, what do you notice <coughs> as, you're, as you're singing? Well, I think I'm, I'm a mess, you know? It's like I, I tend to put my, my shoulders like this, uh -huh. or curve my, my back. Uh -huh. uh, my knees go a lot back. Uh huh. So that doesn't help, and um, so I feel like my pelvis uh -huh. is a bit like to the front. Uh huh. Yeah. And yeah, when I sing, I tend to to lift my head, uh -huh. and I don't yeah. think that's very good either. Yeah. Okay. Um. So to the outer eye, guys, did she look like she was a mess? Mm -hmm. Not a mess. No. We wouldn't <laughs> yes. say. Yes. We wouldn't say mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is just worth hearing because it's so tricky, our, um, you know, our own sense of what we're really doing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why as performers it helps to have these kind of video cameras. It helps to have um, teachers and colleagues, you know, who, mm -hmm. who, who you trust. It helps to work in front of a mirror so that you can really see what you're doing with yourself. Alrighty, so um, we're going to begin by having you see your skeleton inside of yourself. Yeah. And um, when you're standing, mm -hmm. standing is a balancing act. It's not the kind of thing that you need to, um, uh, right, like mm -hmm. grip into. Um, like we think about uh, getting ready for something, mm -hmm. and um, there's some language in, in like a, in, in track and field of you know on your marks get set, right? It's like mm -hmm. the get ready part is get set. As a performer, as a singer, you don't ever want to think about getting set. Getting set is going to pull all of your muscles into tension. And inside of yourself, you're going to compress. And it, it might look small and subtle to the audience, but if you're set inside of yourself, then um, you know those delicate changes that we want to have happen um, with the diaphragm, do you know what a diaphragm is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with your diaphragm and with the air moving over your vocal folds. Like that can't happen if you're set. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting set, you're here balancing. And you're balancing between your head mm -hmm. and your feet. There you go. So you're going to extend your attention all the way down there to your feet. And, and as we're standing here, you're saying, oh, I don't need to get set. And I can imagine that my head is just up there poising and balancing on my spine. Yeah, the base of the skull way up there between the ears, resting on the spinal column. And then all the way down here, your torso, so the bottom of your pelvis, mm -hmm. Just kind of balancing. There you go, on your legs. Feel that little shift? Mm. Does it feel little to you or does it feel big? It feels big. It feels big. Guys, does it look little or does it look big? I can't 
looks little. Yeah, yeah, and you can't see it. <laughs> it's okay. But you heard that, that it feels yeah. big inside of her. Yeah, but your audience can barely see it. Okay. So I'm going to stay here. You're going to begin your song again. And I want to invite you not to get set, okay? Mm -hmm. So it, it might, you know, who knows, maybe your voice will crack a little. It's a different place to sing from. So, mm -hmm. you know, just give it a shot. Wrap your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Okay, good. I'm going to stop you for a minute. Beautiful. Go to the leave, right? That bit? Mm -hmm. Right there on when you say leave, there was a little bit of getting set. <clears throat> So you're gonna, there you go, you're gonna let your head go up there and balance on the top of your spine. Mm -hmm. And again, right in here, these guys, that's it. Gonna be, gonna be balancing on the tops of your legs. And if you start to lose your balance, you've got your feet. Yeah, that's yeah. why you've got feet, right? Yeah, yeah. To balance on. You've got heels, balls, the metatarsals of the foot in the middle, okay. right? The toes up there at the front. Alrighty, so go ahead again. From the beginning or from the Just from the Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Great. Mm. Was that different? Yes, it's just that I feel very wobbly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's a very different yeah. conversation. Yeah. But, Guys, it, oh, but sorry, it, it feels know. more more settled, you know, like, okay. I, I say I feel a mess because I feel like my, my basis mm -hmm. is not, you know, I, f I feel like I'm, I'm a bit like this all yeah. the time when I'm singing, yeah. and, and this feels different in the sense that I feel I'm more connected to the, to the flow. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I, as I'm not used to it, I feel like I, I'm falling backwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a yeah. sensation. Yeah, we're going to do it one more time, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you were less wobbly this time than you were the first time. Yes? Agree, audience? Yeah. Agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the first time, you actually just did it really well. The first time, there's a lot of, you're not grounding mm -hmm. through your pelvic floor. Sometimes they refer to the pelvic floor as a second diaphragm. Mm -hmm. You know, like this, this movement between the, the pelvic floor and the actual diaphragm mm -hmm. is kind of like, um, um, Oh gosh, how do I want to say it? That's that that's your foundation. Mm -hmm. That's your foundation. It's not what you're gonna stand on. You're gonna stand on your feet, mm -hmm. right? But it's your foundation for your sound. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have that, then your sound mm -hmm. doesn't have a foundation. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you are kind of wobbly because you're mm -hmm. looking for your foundation. But but this actually, um, you know, you just are gonna learn to trust it. <laughs> Because it's so new to you, it's not familiar yet. But those feet are really built to be, to be, you know, to be like um, adapting, adapting to weight and adapting to change. And, um, and 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 when performers have their feet, they can go anywhere with the audience, you know, because because then you've got your roots. Okay, let's try it again. Take a little walk. Go for just a little walk. Good. As you're walking, do me a favor and think in yourself. So continue taking a walk here. Yeah. So we teach Alexander in everyday activities for performers. Um, you know, you make music as part of your everyday activity. But you're not making music 24-7. You are doing things like brushing your teeth, you know, washing your face, going for a walk around campus. Okay. You're doing those things all the time. So that's, mm. that's like good practice time to think about how you're using your body in those moments. So then when you come back, you know, to actually stand and do the thing that you love, to be in your singing, um, you, you're already kind of warmed up to where you are in yourself. Okay, take another little walk. <coughs> we'll walk together. Okay, good. As you're walking, you're going to be thinking Good. And it's a small space, I'm sorry, there's not a lot of walking space here. There you go. As you're walking, you're going to be thinking about that, um, your hip joints. Mm -hmm. The place where your legs, yes, that's right, are kind of rolling in your hip sockets. You might think that your pelvis is like a boat, 
you know, your pelvis is kind of afloat, mm -hmm. right? Just buoyed, buoyed or balancing on the tops of your legs. Okay. And this time as we turn the corner, we'll come back to be here for a little more singing. That's right. As you come to stand, you're not going to set, right? No mm -hmm. setting. No get, no get set to mm -hmm. sing. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. But keep going. Did you hear that pitter pat? Make that nice into your own step. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. I used to walk on a shade with this blues on parade. Now I'm not afraid This rover crossed over If I ever had a sand Feel as rich as Rockefeller I got shoes. Stand at summer feet On the sunny side of the street on the shady side of the street, on the sunny side of the street. It, good. It's so sweet. Good. What? Good. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if I'm doing it, but I got the impression I'm, I'm falling to the front. Oh. I don't know if that's what you see. Did anybody see her falling forward? No, it's just mm -hmm. that she's bouncing uh, up. Just, yeah. Yeah. I guess it's, it's the contrast to my <laughs> That's right. this all the time, right? Yeah. So when I'm when I'm standing straight, actually, I got the feeling I'm falling to the front. That is very well said. Okay. That's very well said. And actually, um, FM Alexander, the guy who does this work that I teach, he had, um, I think, a very funny, old-fashioned word for that. He called it debauched kinesthesia. So kinesthesia is, is your feeling sense, you know, it's how your body feels to you. And debauched means that it's all off base. <laughs> you know, debauched. It's it's like not really grounded in what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Oh, I did notice one even at the end, uh, one unconscious movement that she has, or you have when you're seeing. Is that I notice your oh, yeah. eye yeah. is yeah. isolated and keeps going up and down. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tension I put in my face. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But I'm not conscious that I do it. Yeah. It's every time I go up and out, I, I do. I had a teacher, he called it the, the Vogue. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. ran. Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> well, something like that, actually, you might find that you can, you can change once your body is a little bit more quiet in itself. I mean, so. it's like, if the house is on fire, can you do nuanced things? Like, are you are you are you singing? I don't know, Mozart. <laughs> are you singing Mozart when the house is on fire? No, when the house is on fire, you're like the house is on fire. You know, you're, fire you're, you're just trying, you're just trying to deal with the emergency. It's a little bit like that in our nervous systems. You know, when I'm sorry, what was your name? Corina. Corina. When you know when Corina says that she's you know she feels like she's a mess and she's having a hard time finding her ground. <laughs> Her nervous system is busy dealing with that. So this little thing that her voice teacher keeps talking about, you know, where her eyebrow goes up. <laughs> in, in a sense, her nervous system is like, you know, that's Mozart and the house is on fire right now. Um, so, it, uh, interesting, I would love to hear back from you, you know, in a few months to see if, see if you're able to tackle that. Yeah. yeah. Can we get one of the instrumentalists, one of the drummers or the piano player? I'll go. Yeah? If he lets me as drum. Is that okay? Would you like to play piano? Um, I don't like to show off. Okay, all right, that's fine. Do you want to do something else? Do you want some hands on at some point? Um, no, I'm fine. Okay, all right. Uh, will we turn back to? Yeah.
wants to sing. Yeah, we will. We will come back to the singers. I just want to mix it up. Do you play piano? You want to you wanna do that while they're setting up the drum? Yeah, come on. Please go ahead. What's your name? Josephine. Josephine. Okay, so um, do you have a song that you could play, or do you want to work with you know scales or something like that? Can play. Great. Great. start off. said that when he's singing, he's busy thinking about the music, right? He's not thinking about how he's standing. So my hands right here, Josephine, are, are just reminding you that you have a back behind those hands. Mm -hmm. So your fingers are not responsible for the whole, for making the music. Your fingers are, are just the very tip. It's like the tip of the iceberg. Your fingers are just the very tip of your body, which is making the music, right? So I'm, I'm back here on your back. <laughs> yeah, your arms come out of your back and your fingers are attached to your arms. All right, go ahead. big central um, pole, your spine is, is, is like that big central organizer for this, for this back. And when you're seated, your sit bones are like little feet. They're like feet for your back. You guys could all think that, by the way, as you're sitting down. Yeah, there you go. So you just happen to be seated in front of a piano, <laughs> right? It's like. You could be seated over there in one of those blue blue benches, 
You could be seated on the bus. You know, you happen to be seated on a piano bench, and you're, you're thinking about how you use yourself or how you play this instrument, you know, of you. So what if you bring your hands, just let your hands kind of float out onto the keyboard. Good, and now bring your hands back. So when your hands float out in front of you, see if you can maintain this lovely poise, this really delicate balance and poise of your head. Go ahead, float your hands out. Yeah, there you go, good. And bring your hands back. Okay. So now you're making yourself more important than the piano. And it, you know, that might strike some of you as selfish. Maybe you think, oh, I don't, you know, it shouldn't be all about me, it should be about the music, or it should be about entertaining my audience. Um, but I promise you, if it's not about yourself, then you're gonna let your audience down and you're gonna let the music down because yourself is what plays the music. Yeah, there you go. So I'm saying there you go because this is seeming delicate to me. What about you? Uh, I feel lighter, I have tension on my shoulders. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So remind your shoulders that they can relax. <laughs> there you go. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Good. And then one more time, you're going to float your hands out there to the keyboard. Alrighty. Um, so the way that pianists get set, <laughs> singers get set, they kind of set down into their legs really frequently. Pianists, where do you think you set down into? Yeah, that's right. Your, your body gets set down into your arms. You go forward, you go, you, you go down, right? That's what you just said to me. You said, oh, I bring my hands out and I go forward with them. Yeah. So instead of getting set out there with your body into your arms, you're going to leave your back behind you. Yeah, you're going to leave your body back there. And you're just going to float those arms out in front. So it's not about lowering your body onto the keyboard. You're just reaching the arms out, right? All right, beautiful. Give us a play. Um, sing song. Whatever you want, really your choice. Okay, now hang on. Don't set down. Don't yeah. Don't lower yourself down into that keyboard. All right, then go ahead. <laughs> instead of going forward with the... Um, my body feels white and my arms are stretching out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Would you be willing to give us a contrast? Would you be willing to play that same bit of music you just played? Mm -hmm. But this time, let your arms, you know, let your body go forward with your arms. Extend your arms out, but your body's not going to lower down into them this time. I'm 
this performer? How did it sound different to you? Well, for me, um, it sounded like I was controlling the music also. Yeah. Like I was feeling lightheaded the whole time. Yeah, that's like, yeah, it doesn't feel as heavy and tense as before. Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. Can we ask if anybody else heard a change in the sound? Raise your hand if you heard a change. Yeah. What did you hear? Um, was she, I don't know if it was, I think it was a different song, but it's as if the whole weight was pressing on the music. Yeah. For every note, her whole weight was on it. Yeah. But as she relaxed and she sat on her back and everything, it was her fingers that were touching the keys and nothing else. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Kathleen. Um, I thought when you were sitting back for it, it flowed more. Before it was a bit hesitant or disjointed, I don't know what I used to say. Yeah, but it seemed to be more natural when you were sitting back. Yeah, so we're hearing, we're hearing real acoustic differences, mm -hmm. and we're also hearing kind of qualitative musical differences as well. You know, and it's subjective, guys. It's mm -hmm. Hearing is always subjective. It's just fun. I just think it's fun to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Like at the beginning, I thought because she was nervous, she was like struggling with it. Yeah. And then the first time she was sitting back, she was just like, it was just like flowing. It was yeah. even the line of the melody. Was yeah. Just like flowing. yeah. And then again, when she goes back, it's like you struggle with the notes. It's amazing. Not like if I can change so much, but just a little bit. And my impression was when she pressed it down, I felt like, wow, she sits very straight. <laughs> yeah. You know? I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, my, from my point of view, she was very right. straight. But then you see that she can, she can even be more straight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, the, looks, the looks can be deceiving because actually Josephine felt like her shoulders were really tight. And she felt like she was actually heavy down in her arms. So, um, um, you know, very well-meaning friends will tell us when you're making music sit up straight. I have a six-year-old, I have a daughter, and she came home one day and she said, Josephine, you can turn around or go back to your seat, whatever you like. She came home one day and she, she was sitting there very beautifully, like poised in herself, kind of singing her song from chorus. And then she said, Mommy, our music teacher told us that we shouldn't sing like this. We should sing like this. We should sit up straight and sing. And so like, she, she started to sing for me in her version of sitting up straight. And I have to tell you, her sound was so much more beautiful when she was just like at ease and kind of quiet and poised in herself. And so, you know, it doesn't always mean that there's going to be a change when, when we do our, when we do like our, I'm sitting up. <laughs> I've played piano for a lot of years, and all of my teachers have always told me, sit up. <laughs> um, because you know, how many tensions are you using to sit up? Like, it's, you know, to see my six-year-old do it, you can see her applying all of those tensions. But as we get older and more sophisticated, and we study more and more, you know, we, we've been given the note, hey, sit up, but don't raise your shoulders, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sit up, don't raise your shoulders, and don't put your chin back like that, right? And, and we actually start to tie ourselves into this knot of tension, and then it's like, now make beautiful music. But I'm so tight, how do I make beautiful music? Okay, let's hear a drummer. Wherever you like.
kind of was going with that. You felt like you were going with that? Where's your weight? Where are you holding, like, or, or let me ask Down you here. differently. Do you feel like you're this thing that I'm calling the balancing act, or do you feel more like your body is set and you're kind of playing from a set place? Uh, I kind of like to think that I'm all set, but then mm -hmm. on the axle, I kind of pull myself back. Hmm, and, okay. Yeah. yeah, all right, let me move you on a bench so I can Okay. Um, so, first thing is um, we're not going to play the drum yet, so you can. Um, there's that tendency in all of us when the instrument is there, it's all about the instrument. Like when the thought of the song is there, it's all about the song. So, there's this way in which when we begin um, using Alexander principles with ourselves, where kind of the first thing you want to do is just disconnect. Okay, I'm standing in front of my drum, but I am not getting ready to play the drum. Um, oh, yeah, and, and, and that might mean putting down the sticks. So I'm standing here, but I'm actually coming into myself. I'm coming back into myself because the instrument for all of us is out there. So the tendency is to get drawn down into it. Okay. And we're all beginning here by seeing our skeletons inside of us. And by um, rediscovering mm -hmm. the delicate quality of poise that exists within our bodies. So the balancing place for your head is actually higher. You've heard me describe it with other people, but it's always a little different when you get hands on for yourself um, because the balancing place is up here between your ears. So you want to think way up into there. You might even imagine that your spine is behind your nose so that you kind of think about it, you know, from from the front. That's right, there you go. All right. And then let's just let your eyes look over to the right so that we explore the movement of your head on that way high up balancing point. Good. And as your head is moving all the way up in there, I'm just going to suggest that you've got another balancing here where your torso is balancing on your legs. Okay, now, what do you know about locked knees? Does that mean anything to you? Uh, okay. Locking knees. Locked knees are when we do that. Mm. It's when we, it's um, a hyperextension. It's when we pull the knees back. The knee joint only works going forward. <laughs> yeah? Some, some people lock their knees so much, it's almost as though they take their knee, they take it that. Yeah, that's right. I don't understand why some do it. They know they do it. Yeah. I guess that's where the awkward thing comes from. I, I, I think it yeah. might be. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're a bit stiff there in your legs. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good observation. Um, you know why they do it? Because it feels normal to them, and they don't know any better. <laughs> really, that's why they do it. It's why any of, it's why we all have our habits because our habits feel normal to us, and. Um, you know, as, as you guys do a workshop like this today, you want to be kind of generous with yourselves when you start to notice what some of your habits are. You know, like be kind of kind, kind to yourself because because um, habits don't make you a bad person. <laughs> it, it just means that, you know, you've got these places that feel comfortable to you that might be comfortable but may not be effective. So locking these is a positive thing or no? Locking knees is not a positive thing. Oh. <laughs> because if your knees are locked up, you're stiffening your legs. And if your legs are stiffened, I'm going to be colorful here. Basically, the leg bones get jammed up into the pelvis. And if the pelvis is jammed full of legs, then, then you don't have the foundation for your breath, which even if you're not a singer is still important. Because rhythm is all about breath, mm -hmm. right? Pulse. Pulse. You got it. So you want to be connected to your breath. Yeah, which means that we don't want those locked knees. Circle right back around. 
That's very different, isn't it? What's this like? Uh, robotic. Oh, it feels robotic. Does he look robotic? No? <laughs> All right, so we're going to pick up the sticks again and play. Okay, now, that was so great. Well done, Habit. When you picked up the sticks, what happened to your knees? Uh, locked back a bit. They locked! Isn't that brilliant? It's automatic. <laughs> it's automatic, it's your habit. Yeah, that, that you go to play your instrument and your body goes, I know how to do that. <laughs> so put your sticks down. This time, this is like, remember when Dorothy, I had Dorothy walking, and I talked to her about don't go down in order to walk. So here, this is such a great moment. You've got this beginning mm -hmm. of picking up the sticks, where you get to say, don't lock my knees in order to pick up my sticks. Good job. Yeah, good job. That was great. You did not lock your knees that time. OK, so um, when you begin playing, you're going to ask yourself not to lock the knees. Mm -hmm. And then as you're playing, you're just going to see if you can stay connected to, to your own legs as well as the rhythms that you're that you're um, that you're playing. Yep. observation like, oh, I pick up my drumsticks and I lock my legs, it is so easy to just shorten, um, shorten the process in, and make it all about like, I'm either locking my knees or I'm not locking my knees. But I, I, I want to encourage you to think about your body as a whole connected up system. And without us having to rationally go through step by step, mm -hmm. just kind of trust me <laughs> that if you free your neck and get interested in this balance up here, mm -hmm. so that you, you go back, it's up a little bit higher. There you go, and a little bit higher, and a little bit higher, that's right. That if you go all the way up through there, because your head mm -hmm. changes, because your head literally re rebalances itself, your legs have an easier time changing. It doesn't necessarily mean that I should look up though, because every time you mention up and then pushing my head upwards, uh -huh. it's kind of bringing my, my sight up too. You're bringing your eyes up. Yeah. You know, your eyes can move separately from your head. Where would you like to be looking? Uh, right here is fine. Okay, good. So you keep your eyes out there. Um, Did lock or didn't lock? No, you didn't lock. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, guys, show of hands. Who um, who who else wants to work? I know you do. <laughs> okay, last guy. Last guy up. Come on. Yeah, because it's ten minutes to three. Oh. Time goes fast when you're having fun. All right. So, do you have a song for us? Yeah, I can. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, just do the beginning of something. Oh, you know what? I... No, you go ahead. You start it off first. Yeah. Without feeling it, you can do it. Ma ci darem la mano. You know what's 
what's so nice about doing something like this is it's it's fun to hear it's fun to hear performances, right? And it's so nice that we get to start with a performance that's for everybody with performances that are good, and then we get to like see what other colors we can find, right? Like how we can actually make them better. Okay. Um, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, not really, because we know. Um, you know, I teach Alexander Technique five days a week, so I, I teach this technique, you know, to a lot of different people, and half of my students are performers, but the other half come see me because they're in pain. So, like, it, it's really lovely that you guys start off with, with, with it's, you know, it's going pretty well for you, and we're just using this technique to, to enhance it and to make it even better. You know, there are, there are scenarios where people's bodies, like, kind of aren't working for them. And where they start off from is actually, like, a really painful place. And, 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 and it's like, learning how to use these principles is taking them from a painful place into a, you know, like a normal place. Mm -hmm. So, I, I just, I love that. All right. So, you're so excited. I'm so excited, too. Okay. <laughs> so, here's your neck. <laughs> Hello. Hello, neck. Your neck is just another part of this torso. Mm -hmm. Here's the bottom of your torso. Way down in there, yeah. So torsos are deep. <laughs> They're deep, right? <laughs> From way up here to all the way down here, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, lot of air space, a lot of sound space, a lot of, lot of resonating container, right? Mm -hmm. Like resonating shell, the torso, big resonator, big, you know, full torso for sound waves to resonate against. So your torso is three-dimensional, which means that you've got this side-to-side -side dimension as well. Yeah, we call this um, the width dimension. Alexander teachers, we use that language. We use lengthening and widening. So, yeah, okay, good. So I think that wider stance supports a little more width through here. That's just how it seems. I'm way up here. So as you're singing, I don't want you to compress, right, all of that torso space, but I also don't want you to squeeze your torso space either. Okay. I want you to just leave your torso space wee, widening and lengthening and deepening. Good. Your neck is um, easy. And your head, way up in here, come a little higher up here, there you go. Your head is poising and balancing all the way up in here between your ears. Good. And yeah, there you go. Okay, so when you're ready, you can begin. <laughs> So when I'm talking to you about, I don't want you to compress, right? I don't want you to crunch down in your torso, and I don't want you to squeeze. Watch this. When I bring, when 
when I bring my jaw down like that, do you see how my shoulders and my chest also start to kind of squeeze in like that? Can you see that in me? So that's a little bit of what's happening, is that your jaw is coming down. It's kind of coming down and taking away some of that big, beautiful, you know, spacious torso. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the shoulders are like jumping on board and coming in as well. So, yes. Now I am not telling you hold it long or you know stretch yourself out wide. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. I'm saying allow for this freedom. Let your neck be easy. There you go. Let your head poise because when the head is up there balancing then you've got a relief of pressure mm -hmm. in your body. So your body is not gonna close in. So you don't have to, you don't have to pull it wide and you don't have to pull it up long. You, if you keep poising, there you go, then, then you're gonna be okay. All right, and let's sing again. La ci darem la mano. So I'm like, let's keep working on this. But I think we should respect the time. And I, and I do want to have time for comments and questions and that sort of thing. So okay. thank, you. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so yeah. Um, I felt that he became more relaxed in his standings instead of sort of being set yeah. to sing. He was there to sing the song, and the song was heard because he was relaxed. Ugh, it's a great observation. Did you guys hear that? Yes. That instead of getting set to sing the song, you were there <laughs> for the song to. I'm gonna change the words a little, but yeah, for the song to like come out of you. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Like at the beginning when he was singing, I felt he was like on one leg, and then he. All this not being grounded, as mm -hmm. you call it, yeah. made as well like attention in his in his mouth and in the way that he was singing. That afterwards, that's that's why I think he said it was more, more pure the sound. Mm -hmm. He wasn't he wasn't even even his jaw and everything. He wasn't like forcing it. It was yeah. more like flowing. That's it was right. Much much more beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. That's you know what? That's a lovely. That's another. Um, where this happened over here with Josephine playing the piano, where you guys were observing uh, these changes in, in kind of multiple ways. Like there's this mechanical shift where he's not trying to ground down in his neck and his jaw anymore because he's got his legs there. And, and that's kind of the, the, the flip side of the coin of like, he's not there trying to set himself. He's just showing up so that the music can happen. Yeah, yeah. If, um, some, some people tend to um, hunch forward. If you should raise your head, do you somehow like, you bring yourself backwards and you lock your knees so you have your down? Is that another way of compressing but in your back? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what's your name? Lati. Lati? Yes. So what, what she's describing here is you know, watching performers who do this, and they've been given the note, you know, this doesn't work. So they go here instead. <laughs> and it's the same thing. And it's the same exact thing. It's just taking, instead of the tension being in here to hold the body up, the tension moves to here to hold the body up. But either way, you're still dealing with tension that's gonna, um, that's going to lock your spine 
and going to compress for singers your diaphragm. Um, but you know, all of those like delicate internal systems that need to be functioning in order for you to be a human being making music. Um, I got a question. Yeah. What song do you want to sing for her? What song do I want to sing for you? <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, what song does my daughter sing? Gosh, you know, she's in a school, she's in a school chorus, so she kind of comes oh, home singing whatever they're singing. Wow. She's been singing a Martin Luther King song a lot. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> she's got, it's like a little, uh, what's the word for it? They say an earworm. Right? She, it's like an earworm. She's got it stuck oh, in her wow. head. This, this, this like really sweet, it's a little like a folk song. Okay, so... Um, but it's so difficult to do the work without somebody guiding you, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. like me, the feeling I had, I was falling to the ground, and actually, it's not what I'm doing, I'm actually standing up. Yeah. I really think we need somebody guiding you. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's, let's begin to kind of segue into a closing conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's definitely true that maybe maybe you guys who had the hands-on experience can can agree. It, it, it's different to have um, somebody else there, kind of partnering with you to support you in making the changes. Um, it is, though, possible. It's really possible to go through the process of change yourself. Um, Alexander did it himself. Um, he, um, he wrote about his, his process in a book called The Use of the Self. The first chapter he describes literally wow. like how he studied himself and what he noticed and his pitfalls. Um, so you could definitely use that book as, as, a, as a kind of companion. Mm -hmm. Many people do find it easier to study with a teacher. Um, so. Um, I don't think you guys have a teacher here at, at, at the college, so I think that's why I came out today. Um, I do teach a group class in the city. Uh, it meets on Sunday nights. You know, you have my, you've got my, there's a card back there. Um, and I teach private lessons too. So I teach in Astoria as well as in Manhattan. I teach in Astoria mm -hmm. and Union Square. Um, you know, there are also great books. You know, like it helps to have a teacher, but it's also you're in school, so you probably have a lot of other things on your plate. Um, yeah, if you think that you want to study, you know, then let's have a conversation, any of you. Um, but, you know, you also all had a real, you know, kind of hour and 40 minutes of, of something new today. And hopefully, you'll go off and in your rehearsals, you'll play with what you learned here today. Oh. And um, <laughs> yeah, and, and, see, <laughs> and see where it takes you. You know, see what kind of door gets opened up from this workshop. All righty, I think, I think we'll, we'll be wrapping things up. So I just want to thank you all. You guys were um, really participating in the program. And um, as I say, I'll be around for a few minutes if you want to talk after class.